Hello and welcome to the Forstronics YouTube channel and blog and in this post we're going to do an unboxing of the Arduino Pro Mini. Now in this example I'm going to do the 3.3 volt one that's 8 megahertz but a lot of what I'm going to say applies also to the 5 volt 16 megahertz version as well. Okay, let's get up close and personal with the Pro Mini. Here's the Mini right out of the package. I just took it out. I also took out the FTDI Basic Breakout, which I'll talk about in a second. But the first thing you could notice about the Mini, it's all about the size. It's really small. And my girlfriend always tells me size doesn't matter, but for the Mini, it does. So there is some assembly required, so I had to have some header pins to get started. So basically, the Pro Mini doesn't have the serial chip on it that the Arduino Uno does. So to do the programming, you need this breakout. You could also use an FTDI cable. I chose to go with this breakout because it has a nice USB connection. And since I was using the 3.3 volt Pro Mini, I had to be sure to buy the 3.3 volt uh, FTDI Basic. Another thing to note is the great thing about the Mini besides its size is its price is pretty small. The bummer though is you need the FTDI uh, which bumps it up to about the same price as an Uno. Okay, since, since the header pins aren't going to connect magically, we need to solder them on. One thing to note about the Mini is there's soldering required, so once you add these pins, they're sort of on there. To me, because of that, the Mini for me is more of a tool where I have some Arduino Unos around my house running, you know, controlling my motion controlled light, uh, controlling my thermostat. Now I'm going to maybe try to go with the Pro Mini because it's much smaller. So when I start my design, I think I'm going to still go with the Arduino Uno, but then for the design process, I'll add the Pro Mini because it's smaller, but it's not easily reconfigurable. Oh, and note, one of the most annoying things I found about the uh, the Pro Mini is it has four of its pins not on the outer row. Uh, there, it's four of its analog pins. Now, what is nice is it does give you two extra analog pins over the, the uh, Uno, but unfortunately the four of them are not on the outer edge, and two of those are the uh, I2C. So I, I guess, I don't know what SparkFun was thinking here, they're the makers of the Pro Mini, but... I'm guessing they, they thought you would have a sensor or something farther away that you could then just put a wire from those, but I, I didn't like that. Okay, some additional, before I show you just a quick example, here's some additional notes. Uh, it has a RAW input, which basically means unregulated DC. So it is nice, even with its small size, it does have a regulator on it, so you can give it, I think, 3.5 volts to, I don't know, 9 or 12 volts, don't quote me on that. Now, one thing to note is the 3.3 version, 3.3 volt version of the Pro Mini runs at only 8 megahertz. The Arduino Uno runs at 16 megahertz. Now, the 5 volt version of the Pro Mini runs at 16 megahertz. And from what I understand, the 8 megahertz for the 3.3 volt version, once again, it's the same chip as the 5 volt version. It just has to do with the fact that it can't run at, a, at as fast of a speed at, at that low voltage. But... For using the Arduino library, I don't think the 8 megahertz is going to affect operation much. It's it's if you get into the data sheet and you start drilling down into the low-level functionality of the chip where you might run into issues with the 8 megahertz. But I think for you know 95% of these people, that's that's not an issue. Also, too, there's another step. When you select your board, which you can select the, the Pro Mini, uh, you need to specify which one you're using because the older version used... Uh, the at mega 168 and now it uses the 328 and you also have to specify the voltage level because that's once again corresponds to the clock speed all right let's look at a quick example of the pro mini in app in action so we're going to watch a video inside of a video so i'm just going to blow your mind with that but once i opened up the mini put it together and ran a test and I was able to do this in about 15 minutes or maybe even less. So I just quickly soldered all my pins. I got my uh, FTDI basic, connected it and you can see that's why I used the 90 degree pins so it would kind of go on there parallel. Then I got my USB cable and, and ran it to my computer and I was able to load the blink sketch which is one of the most basic sketches where it just blink, blinks the LED that's attached to pin 13. So just like the Uno, the Pro Mini has a 
LED attached to pin 13. So I'll just quickly show this example, but no problems was able to get it up and running. You can see the LED flashing at the one second intervals right there. And there you go. So really easy to get started, you know, but once you solder, you know, it's, it's hard to unsolder. And keep in mind too, the Pro Mini is very small. So you want to take your time. Actually, you want to solder quickly because you don't want to keep your hot iron on those pins too long because they're so close to the chip and, and other parts on the board. Okay, that's it I have for the uh, unboxing of the Arduino Pro Mini. Once again, overall, happy with it. It's small, which I like. It's not easily reconfigurable, but for me, that just means I'll start out with an Arduino Uno that's easy to prototype. And then if I have a project that I'm going to deploy somewhere in my house to control a light or whatever, I'll use this because it'll give me a much smaller finished product. If you liked what you saw, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can always email me at forcetronics at gmail.com. If you have future project or tutorial suggestions, let me know. Thank you for watching.